Mr. Bergeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. So now I will turn it back to Arthur. Thank, Thank you, you very you. much, Christine. And, and once again, as I had mentioned about the Alzheimer's Association, for any program, if you want to know about any state or federal program that is available to elders in Wayland, they know. They not only know the program, and, and by the way, if you call your Council on Aging, typically if you're they're talking about specific programs, they're going to refer you back to BayPath. So they, whether, whether Mary has Alzheimer's or not, Frank and Mary once they are over about 60 years old, need to know Christine Alessandro and her folks at Baypath. They're like really terrific. So now I just want to talk, go back to a couple of the programs that Christine had mentioned. There were two in particular, the Frail Elder Waiver and the Personal Care Attendant Program, because as she mentioned, those are programs that are available to people who, because they need assistance with at least two of the activities of daily living or require supervision and therefore are otherwise eligible for nursing home care, they're also eligible for these tremendous, these very, very robust programs to help people stay at home, in including, as, as Christine had mentioned, up to 24-7 and, and often 40 or 50 hours a week of home care. So in order to qualify for these programs, what are the rules? Now, once again, you remember Mary's, Frank and Mary's asset and income situation. Now, in this case, in this case, there is an income am amount above which there is a significant deductible that the person who has, who has Alzheimer's has to pay. That income uh, uh, amount, which is three 300 times the poverty level, which is, and that magic number right now is $2,164, if I recall correctly, per month. Don't ask where these numbers come from. They come from the sky, right? The government changes them every once in a while. That's the number. But Mary, in this case, her income is only $1,000 a month. Frank's income does not count. So in this case, Mary qualifies. Uh, even if Frank were applying, in this case, his income is low enough so that he would qualify even without a deductible. Uh, if he earned more than that amount, though, contrary to what you may hear about this program, he is not or she is not excluded from the program. She would simply have to pay a deductible and then still be eligible. That's the income side. On the asset side, in this situation, remember Frank and Mary. Mary's got Alzheimer's. Frank doesn't, right? Frank's, Frank's assets are not counted at all. So the strategy here is very simple. You shift all the assets to Frank. Mary's income is low enough. Mary immediately qualifies for the program, right? And, and what does she qualify for? Well, among other things, whatever number of hours Baypath Elder Services says she needs in home care in order to keep her from going to the nursing home, that's how many hours she qualifies for. So it's whatever Baypath says. Right? Baypath decides whether she's otherwise eligible for nursing home care, and Baypath decides how much care she needs at home. There are also other programs, as was mentioned. For example, the, 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 the so-called PCA, the Personal Care Attendant Program. There's, there, she's also eligible then to participate in so-called medical daycare programs. There are a lot of things she's eligible for. The bottom line of this presentation isn't to have you coming away saying, oh, I now know all the programs. It's simply to have you saying, if you're in this situation, you ought to call BayPath. They're going to help you figure this out. And don't assume that you're not eligible because you're over asset or you're over income, because you're not. Mary would always be eligible for these programs. What would she have to do? Shift her assets to Frank. And once again, Frank would want to change his will. Because if Frank drops dead and his plan is that everything goes to Mary, now Mary does have a problem because now Mary's got way too much in assets and she's going to have a lot of trouble qualifying. But what if, I, once again, I know Frank and Mary's goal, all of my clients' goals, is to stay at home. Everybody wants to stay at home. And you should. That's the best place as long as it's safe. As long as it's safe. But what if you find that being at home is no longer safe? Or in the case of Mary, no longer the place where Mary can be happy, because while she's happy being at home, and that part's good, the fact of not seeing anybody because no one's coming home, or worrying about trying to get, up, get down the stairs, that's not good, or Frank worrying that the stove's not going to get shut off if Mary turns it on because she's trying to cook her usual meal, but then she forgets to turn off the stove, that's not good. What if it isn't going to work at home? 
The next question is, is there, an, is there another alternative? Now, once again, in 1991, when my mother had Alzheimer's, there was not this alternative. Assisted livings did not exist, right? Basically, now you have these options. You have places that you can move, wonderful assisted living places, um, which can be safe and provide that kind of socialization, where there's programmatic things, where you know you're not going to have to shovel any of the snow, where you know you can spend your day inside if it's really a terrible day, right? And where there are folks who are specifically trained, and, you know, and, and, and Christine was talking about programs to train caregivers in the community to understand how to deal with folks with, with Alzheimer's symptoms. But here you've got folks who are typically specifically trained to deal with Alzheimer's. Um, you are blessed here in Wayland uh, because we are actually doing this presentation in one of those places that actually has specifically a memory care unit, which is, there, which is a unit designed for folks who may have more substantial um, uh, needs resulting from the fact that they have dementia. And we have Jazz Civitan, and I hope I pronounced your name right, yeah. who runs that program to talk about that program a little bit. She's going to talk about it, and then I'm going to talk about the money, because oftentimes, just as with, with Christine's programs, people will say, I got too much money, I could never qualify for that. In Jasmine's, in Jazz's case, people will say, oh, that costs too much money, I could never do that. So we're going to just talk about that a little bit, just because you want to be aware about some of the options that you may not have known about to deal with those cost issues. Jazz. Hello everyone, I'm Jazz Civitan. I work here at Carriage House at Lee's Farm. I am, my title is the Avita Director. So Avita is our memory care and dementia neighborhood. And I say neighborhood for a specific reason. Let's go to the right here, okay. I say neighborhood because that's what it is. Neighborhood, what does neighborhood mean to you guys? If I hear, if you hear neighborhood instead of say unit or facility, what does that mean? Anyone? family exactly and you're sharing back and forth it's not just alone time exactly so gone are the days that we say unit or facility we say neighborhoods and that, because that's what it is it's the vita neighborhood so next slide so for instance let's take the vita memory care neighborhood this picture is actually our activities room if you notice the, the contrast in the colors, it's welcoming, it's warm. We want our residents to come to our neighborhood and feel like they can succeed. This is going to be a success for them. Because unfortunately, the residents that we're getting on our neighborhood, they have Alzheimer's. They have a type of dementia where you know, their day-to-day -day life isn't as easy as your day and my day. They need staff. They need us to make the connections for them to create success. So you'll see a lot of our slides that I show you, little bits and pieces of what our neighborhood can offer and what our neighborhood is about. So on to the next slide. This is our creative, our creative activity room. Notice the colors. Notice the artwork that's displayed. It's our way of creating a space for our residents that they can succeed. It's a program where you can have an art program and get your hands dirty and really show your creativity because that doesn't go away with this disease. If you were once creative in your earlier years or maybe you majored in art, that doesn't go away. That love is still there. So what we're here to do is not only provide that for residents that it is important for, but that's also, that's home. That's what you would do at home. Create beautiful pieces of artwork. This is our dining room created for success. And what, why I say created for success. So here are our tables here. And you can't really see the table settings, but I'll explain them to you. So our table settings, instead of having the fork, the knife, the spoon, a mug, a glass, we're going to have the simple utensils that are necessary for that meal at that specific point. So say if you have your soup, you're only going to have that soup spoon there. Why? Because if our residents are dining and they have the options of, say, the soup spoon, and the teaspoon, the fork, they might not know which one at that point to decide to use. And they'll get frustrated. And so our job, being the Avita director and working with our aides and working with our activity staff and working with our families that come in, we're going to just put the soup spoon out because it makes that connection for the resident. They didn't struggle. They, okay, here's the spoon. 
Oops. Here's the spoon. They've made that connection, and we, behind the scenes, made that connection for them, but the resident doesn't know that. They made it for themselves. We are setting up those connections for our residents for success. Also, the color contrast. Again, it's a little hard to see here, but instead of a white tablecloth, say a white placemat with white napkins, with our folks with dementia or Alzheimer's, they're going to look at that and they're not going to see that contrast. They need the colors to pop. They need the colors to be different so they can have a successful dining experience. And you might think that I'm talking a lot about dining, but dining is so important. Unfortunately, with this disease process, as it progresses, our residents are going to forget that they're hungry. They're going to forget that they're thirsty. And so what's important for our staff is to create a dining experience that is successful because that's, we need our residents healthy. We need our residents to understand and, and be part of the dining experience and have a success, successful dining, which is a program. When you hear activities and when you hear programs, you might think an art program or an exercise program. Well, those are all programs and they're all very successful and all of our residents need those. But dining's a program. And washing dishes, that's a program. What do you guys do at your home? Those are all programs. I know when I go home, I do the laundry, I take my dog out. Those are programs. So yes, we provide the exercise and the programs that are fun. We have accordion players come in and entertainment. But you have to think of the smaller programs, doing the laundry, washing the dishes, folding clothes. Those are all programs too. And that's what we can provide here. 